Hi everyone, happy Friday. So I am doing a demo in Grains of Gold. We're going to be doing a, another double page spread using Neocolor 2s. I decided to come and do a voiceover instead. So if I'm waving my hands around like I'm talking, that's why, because I already had voice, but I changed my mind. So um, I had a color combo I really wanted to use in here and use it across a double page spread. And um, I wanted to continue my Neo Color 2 demos. Um, last time we did the Amazon paper that was treated with satin glazing liquid. So this time we are doing grains of gold and I will be treating one of the pages and the other one page will be untreated. And so we get to kind of compare them side by side. I get to tell you guys the pros and cons of each. And, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, you can decide what, what suits you the best. And I learned, I learned quite a bit along the way on this. So I did do a test page, which I'm probably going to show here in just a minute. I did an untreated test page with the Neo Colors. And it's this little green mouse right here. I did notice um, if you watch my uh, Amazon paper demo with the treated paper, um, I had to use a lot less Neo Color. Um, to, it went a lot farther with a lot less. I noticed this with this immediately that on the untreated paper, I had to use quite a bit more of the Neo Color to get the color. It didn't want to spread out quite as far, which makes sense because the, the treated part of the paper pretty much just, um, oh, this shows here, here, it actually kind of faded or shadowed, excuse me, on the other side. And the reason that gel pen probably did was because the paper was already wet. And I figure that out later on that that is an issue with at least the Arteza gel pens. So, all right. So here are, are my handsome devils that we are going to do. Um, you guys just saw a glimpse of the page, the double page spread I did last month. Like I said, I've used this color combo before years, about four years ago, and I love it. And I thought it would be neat to use it across both pages, just in different ways. So she, her side is treated with the golden satin glazing liquid and his side is untreated. So um, for this demo today, I'm going to be doing her side of the page and we're going to look at what the Neo Colors will do with treated paper. Um, and I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the base paper is like as much when you're treating it um, because you're basically creating a barrier and you're creating um, you know, a barrier for the water to stay on the surface longer. So um, I think, yeah, I have to go get some paper clips to make sure this is clipped down so we can get started. So this is really my second time really like using the Neo Colors that <laughs> turns out to be a good experience. I use them two different ways. I will put them directly on the paper and then I also scrub them on this, this rough looking palette here. So you'll see me use it uh, both ways. Now with the Amazon demo, and I'll put a card up here for that if you haven't had a chance to go see that yet. One of the things that I've had trouble with with the Neo Colors in the past is um, they seem to get dull. If I, they seem to get dull or have some type of residue where they just don't look very vibrant. And what I came to kind of figure out with the Amazon page was that less is more with the Neo Colors. So at least on treated paper, I don't have to scribble all the way outwards to get the color that I need. If I oversaturate it, it actually kind of dulls it out. So here you see I'm taking the orange, which is the middle color, and I'm just drawing a line and just scribbling out a little bit all the way around her, around the edge there. And uh, again, this is treated paper. And I, what I've learned is that I was going to try with this little bit instead of, you know, maybe overdoing it by scribbling the entire page with it. 
activate this and see how far I can take it out and try to keep it remaining you know bright and vibrant without getting that hazy residue which again usually comes from just having too much pigment on the page so so yeah I use three different colors I use a dark yellow and then the orange to mix this is the 30 pack of neo colors and then I use the vermilion on the outer edges and a little bit on the inner frame right here so I end up using an Arteza water brush again I don't know what the holdup is right here <laughs> this is what happens when you do a voiceover you um never quite remember what is going on oh I think I was going to find my my uh, rag no I have my paper towels here so here I've activate started activating it and basically just dissolving that line and pushing out from it I apologize for the glare here I did not realize how far out how much of a glare it was pulling it will it'd be a little easier to see as we go along now one thing I will note, this looks almost like a neon orange because of the lighting, but this is more of just a regular, like, a navel orange color. It's just, I apparently was a little too well lit right here, and um, it uh, took a neon cast to it. So as you can see, look how far I am able to push out this color. Just that little bit of scribble. Now granted, um, with lighter colors, you will probably need more on the paper. Darker colors, you'll probably need less. But I am really able to push it out pretty far across this page. I can already tell I'm going to have to come back in with a little bit because it's not going to quite reach all the way to the edge of the paper. But it gives me quite a bit of color for just that little bit had i scribbled it across that entire edge um, i would have had a ton of extra pigment i kind of think of this as a good way so um neo colors are not cheap and um Kind of, in my opinion, if you really want to stretch your neo colors as far as you can, I would suggest using some sort of treatment on paper. Um, as I've noted before, it doesn't have to be satin glazing liquid. Um, I've used clear gesso in the past. Um, I've tried watercolor ground. All are good options. I have just found that the satin glazing liquid leaves the least amount of texture on the paper which um, does well for if you're using you know multiple mediums like colored pencils and stuff so um, I used to use gesso a lot more and then now I'm on the satin glazing liquid train but you can see just how little of the actual neo color I needed to do this and um, yeah at the end of the day these neo colors <laughs> will last me forever um, because especially since I have other mediums that I can I can use like this like gelatos and king art gel sticks and stuff like I mean seriously this 30 set of neo colors will probably just last me forever unless I just went to exclusively using them and while I feel better about them than I did before I did the Amazon uh, paper demo I I don't know I still um, when it comes to their their performance on untreated paper I struggle with them and you'll see that with um, my dude over there whenever we get to coloring his side and I do apologize there are going to be times where it's not quite in the camera like right here and I will realize it at some point and pull it back so So what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and jump to the next part here. Um, you basically got an idea of what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue dissolving out the rest of this and we'll move to the next step.
All right, so for the inside, I am going to mix, and I'm going to mix on the palette, the yellow and the orange. It's the deep yellow. It's not the, there's two yellows in the 30 set, and um, it's the darker yellow. What I wind up with here when I try to mix it all together is a color that really doesn't look all that different from what's currently on there. Like I said, I had the lights too bright. Um, I I don't know. Maybe maybe for Christmas or something, I might seriously look at my lighting setup and my um, audio setup and see if I can come up with something a little bit better. I mean, it's what I have right now is perfectly serviceable, but in cases like this, it's just really hard to see a lot of detail and nuance because I have it overly bright. So. I end up pulling from the palette and painting straight on um, with the water brush here on the inside of the frame. And honestly, I, I think I like using the Neo Colors best this way. This is actually how I wind up using them for the rest of the picture. So for both pictures, pretty much everything gets a Neo Color 2 base or a layer. And then I go over the top with pencils or gel pen or paint in this case. Um, this, this started to go really wrong when I tried to get cute and add some paint to it. And we'll see that here in a little bit. But, um, here I am coming in and I just decided to go ahead and fill in some of these little gaps to create a little bit of dimension to the kind of frame we've got going on here. Now, like I said, this is a lighter color than what's on the outside. It's just very hard to see right here. Um, in a minute, when I go with the darkest red-orange color on the outside, I do uh, use it on the outer edge and on the inner uh, edges to try to make it a little more distinct, and I think it works out um, pretty well. So, But honestly, this is like... I think I like using the Neo Colors the best this way because this gives me a nice flat um, painted surface. Like um, when I put the scribble the Neo Color on the paper, um, it gives you a little bit of that um, kind of watercolor look to it where you can see on the outer edges like there's there's light areas and dark areas. It looks a little more artistically splotchy I guess is the way to put it splotchy doesn't sound very good but artistically splotchy and um, when I'm using it as a base I don't want it to be splotchy so I much prefer putting neo colors gelatos what have you on a palette and painting them directly on when I'm not using them as backgrounds just so I can get that nice solid base that I'm looking for so shouldn't like too much more of this what i end up doing you'll see in a minute um it looks like i've painted um a little bit of it onto the my dude over there and that's just because i had some leftover of this uh, light orange yellow and so that's going to be the base for his hair so rather than um, waste what i had i wanted to go ahead and paint his side it got really crazy there for a while. I had I had clips where I was doing different things to different sides of the book. And I'm like, I'm just trying to do one at a time. And anyway, so you'll see that in a minute too. Any time now. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. So yeah, like I said, just to not waste it, I went ahead and used it as a base on that side and painted it on. So now I'm taking the red orange and I am just going to scribble a little bit in the corners and I'm basically going to draw a line around the edge of the picture. And that's what I'm explaining as I'm waving my hand around. One thing I did want to note, I am, I do have this artist glove on. I found not as much after they're activated, but when I first scribble on Neo Colors, um, your hand, my hand can pick it up on the paper if I'm rubbing it across the paper and cause smudges. 
usually when it's activated, I don't have that problem, especially if I use too much of it, yes. But if I use a normal amount, um, I don't seem to have it pick up like that on a activated page. So, so here, like I said, I used a very small amount just because I want to see what it's going to do. And you can't see what I'm doing because the page is just off screen. Uh, I'll get it in a minute. I'll figure it out. I actually thought about using a watercolor brush on this just because with the satin glazing liquid I knew um, I could use more water and safely without causing a whole lot of issues so so here I am just you know dissolving that line and just kind of blending it in towards inwards towards the page I just kind of wanted to create an outer edge of that kind of red color reddish orange which funny enough on here ends up looking kind of pink it's funny, it does end up kind of looking like pink and yellow when I'm done just because of the way the camera is, but this is a red-orange, so. So what I figure out pretty quick is that I don't feel like I used enough of it, so I'm going to end up coming back and adding more. I end up doing two different things. I um, add more to the edges right here, so I'm going to continue on and dissolve that, you know, going around it right now here in a second and the cool thing about the neo colors of course is as you're going back over it especially on a treated page you're kind of reactivating what's already there um, and it allows you to blend in a lot better I can blend and get more subtle color with a lot less effort when I treat the page. So that is one big benefit to using a a satin glazing liquid or gesso is that um, once I get comfortable with knowing how much pigment to put on the page this would be a really quick background. The reason it's <laughs> taking so many steps right now is just because I'm not used to using it. That's why this is a demo, not a tutorial. Um, I'm not used to using it, and I'm kind of trying along with with y'all in how much I really need to use to get any color, and less is always more. I'd rather use a little bit less than come in and add more than add too much and then get that kind of hazy dingy look that I just don't like with that I've had in the past with these so this actually winds up doing very nicely in all honesty the background ends up being a little lighter than I had in my mind um, because I use such little nail color and you can see there's some really nice light spots and stuff but honestly when I got done I was pretty okay with that she's going to be pretty bold with some purple hair and um, so I uh, kind of was digging the the lighter wash more of a wash look background so I ended up being pretty okay with that However, this is still not enough color for me. Plus, that middle part still looks way too much like the yellow on the outside. So what I'm going to do probably here in a minute is take my red-orange and actually go ahead and do another line around her and the frame. Is this what I'm doing here? Or am I just... Yes so that I can bring a little bit more of that red orange into the picture. Between the one other good benefit to treating the paper is that your paper dries a lot faster um, with the treatment on it than untreated paper. So or maybe I don't know it feels like it does to me 
You'd think it was the opposite, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the untreated does dry faster. It probably does, and I'm crazy. However, it still dries reasonably fast. I worked on that background, and then by the time I got back around to it to do this, that background was already mostly dry, and I'm just reactivating it a bit by blending in like this. So just adding that real thin line around her um, gave me just a little bit more color on the outside. Like I said, I'm just adding bit by bit to get the effect I want. I don't use these enough to know fully how not to oversaturate the paper yet. So, so I'm just probably going to go ahead and wind up going over most of the page. And like with the orange, you can see how much, how far out I'm able to pull the color and create that blend that I really want. All right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and kick off to the next part. So what I do is I come in and I add a little more to the edges again and... Um, to finish this out and then we're going to move to the next part and I'm going to scribble on a palette to lay down the layer of neo color for her in the frame then you're going to see me use some paint you're going to see me add my colored pencil and add in all my little doodads and actually finish out the picture I am going to set that to music so if you're not really in the mood to see all that, of course, um, I do have chapters down in the description so you can skip on to that if you would like. So um, here we go.
Okay, so she is all done. I ended up using, um, again, the pencil, the color combinations that I used a while back. Um, I realized it wasn't just Arteza. Apparently there's some Prisma and Polychromos in there as well. So I um, ended up using some different Arteza and Prisma purples for her hair. Um, some Polychromos and Arteza for the green. And then the blue, I think, was maybe all Arteza. I can't quite remember. Combination of Prisma and Arteza for her face as well. Kind of a, I'll put all the combinations down in the description, but it's kind of like a ochre, yellow ochre, goldenrod, and ginger combo that actually turned out quite nice. I was a little worried it might be too orange. And in the lighting on the camera, it kind of looks orange like the background, but it, it, it's not when you look at it, you know, um, in real life, I guess. So, um, this side was, as I noted, treated with the um, satin glazing liquid, and that worked great for the Neo Color 2s. They gave me a lot more time to push the color around the page. I didn't have to use as much of the Neo Color 2s to create the background. Um, there's, uh, because of that extra layer of protection, I don't have to worry about bleed through from the other side. And uh, when we get into the other picture, you'll see what I mean by that. The one downside to the satin glazing liquid is it creates a little bit rougher texture. And um, I used my Artezas over here and I didn't really have too much of a problem with them, but I noticed on this treated paper, the Artezas and Prismas were a little, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, they were a little soft for the, what it created, which was a toothier paper. So I ended up having to use a Caran d'Ache blender to go over it and kind of smooth it out a little bit. And that worked fine. Um, but because of my hand and wrist issues, um, I'm kind of limited in how much I can do that. And by the time I got down here, I said, we're just going to do gel pen for the frame. Because <laughs> to be honest, my hand was tired. And I feel like this is a pretty adequate amount of pencil for a picture for me. <laughs> so, um, I have a combination of, uh, liquid pearl for her little, um, headpiece, a gold extreme sheen gold paint for the um, actual medallion part shimmer paint for the gem i didn't particularly like the extreme sheen gold paint um, i feel like i would probably do better in the future with a metallic watercolor and then i use my artesia glitter oh i use the shimmer paint down here for her little brooch but then I use the Arteza glitter gel pens for the frame and for the little stars on her face. And I think she turned out fantastic. I am um, very happy and very pleased with how this picture turned out. You can actually see kind of the difference of just the, the Neo Color 2s plus adding gel pen and pencil and, and doodads. You know, kind of the difference in the pages there. So, um... I would say overall, uh, just so f in so far as to working with the pictures, working with watercolor, I prefer the treated page. Um, with pencil, I have a feeling I'm going to prefer the non-treated page, but it's probably going to come down to I will probably end up at least treating one side of each set of pages just to avoid any gel pen bleed through. Um, on this side because it's untreated I actually had some gel pen from this page bleed through when I wet down the paper you can kind of see it right here but see now that this is treated the the even if I wet down this other side it shouldn't bleed through it should be protected so that kind of weighs out the cons of the pencil part for me especially if I'm not using a lot of pencil if I'm using a lot of pencil I probably wouldn't treat the paper but in this case I think it'll be just fine but we'll see for sure I'm going to work on him tomorrow morning hopefully to have for Sunday's video so you will get the full experience of this one for Friday and then this one for Sunday um, 
thanks guys for sticking around i hope you are enjoying this series and um what a way to kick off watercolor summer huh <laughs> all right thanks and bye for now